Let's take a look now at combining the gas vapor power cycle. So here you'll bring in air, put it through a compressor, through, through a combustor with some fuel, through, put it through a gas turbine, some of that's connected via the same shaft, some of that power from the turbine goes back to drive the compressor, and then you do something, you put the exhaust gases through a heat exchanger where you're transferring heat out of those exhaust gases and are heating up, acting like a steam generator for a steam. So here is your gas cycle and here is your vapor cycle. And so this heat exchanger boils water, creates steam, pass that through a steam turbine. After the steam turbine goes through the condenser, pump, and back. So we're very familiar with the vapor as well as gas power cycles, so they combine them to try to improve the overall efficiency of the system. Let's say uh, somebody asked you, said this is a complete system, let's introduce states, uh, let's call them state 1, state 2, state 3, state 4, state 5. So those are State 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all for the gas power, all for air, air properties. And then State 6, State 7, State 8, and State 9 are all for water or steam. State, so State 6, 7, 8, 9 are for steam. And you're asked to compute something like um, what is the overall thermal efficiency of this power cycle? Well, you would want to know the power that comes out of the gas part of the cycle, add it to the power out of the, the vapor part of the cycle, VAP, which is W dot VAP will be what comes out of the steam turbine minus what has to go back to drive this pump, true? So that's what comes out of the vapor, the net out of the vapor cycle. And then what do you divide it, divide it by for the thermal efficiency? Q dot N? Q dot N. And where is the only Q dot N? It's only in the combustor, that's right. You look and you search, where are all my Q dots? There may be some Q dot outs, okay? But the Q dot ins are just, there's only one place where there's a heat rate of heat transfer in. All right, let's do this. How do I calculate Q dot in? Would that be the mass flow rate of the gas or the air? You could put M dot A or M dot G. You know, it's what symbol you want for the mass flow rate of the air and the mass flow rate of the gas. Times the enthalpy 3 minus enthalpy 2. Does that look reasonable? How about the W dot for the gas cycle? Would that be the mass flow rate of the gas times the specific work out of the gas turbine, H3 minus H4, minus H2 minus H1, what has to go back to feed the compressor? Does that look good? Okay. How about for the W dot of the vapor? Is that equal to the mass flow rate of the steam times what is produced in the steam turbine, H7 minus H8, minus what needs to, to drive the pump, H6 minus H9? Thumbs up if you agree on that one as well. <clears throat> so it depends on the enthalpies and the mass flow rates. Because we have two mass flow rates, the air and the steam, that we have to link them together. Where are they linked? They're linked together in this heat exchanger, true. So what comes, the rate of heat transfer out of the air in that heat exchanger is equal to the rate at which it flows into the steam in that heat exchanger. So the equation that links these two cycles the gas and the vapor power cycles together is the energy balance right here, which is the mass flow rate of the gas times the enthalpy 
4 minus enthalpy 5, isn't this? So many kilowatts coming out of the gas equal to the mass flow rate of the steam, H7 minus H6. Do you agree? Does that look good? Very good. <clears throat> well, let's take a look. Um, somebody says, I would like to do this. I would like to do W net out of that cycle is equal to Q dot net in. Can I do that? Do you understand that? Have you solved enough of these problems where they say, well, we could go ahead and get W dot net, but it may be easier to get Q dot net. And because the W dot net was, you have to account for this part, and this part, and then depending how you do the turbine, you could do the turbine out only minus what goes back to ride, drive the compressor or, or this part. But if you decided to use Q dot net, well, I need all of my ins as well as outs. So it's going to be Q dot in, there's only one of them, minus any and all Q dot outs. Where do I have some Q dot outs? The condenser, the steam condenser. So this is the one, one of those Q dot out in the condenser. Okay, so you would need to put that in here. Is there any other Q dot out? I ask this question because it's tricky. And a lot of students will want to go this route and then they'll make the error right at this point on an exam. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. And we would call it an adiabatic or well insulated heat exchanger. So that's why they're equal, right? They're equal because there's none to the surroundings. It's all internal. You got it? Yeah, from five. And people will forget it because it's not shown explicitly. Conceptually, what you have to do is you have to bring five and put it through a heat exchanger to get it back to one to close the loop. And to close that loop, you have some Q dot out of the air. I mean, whatever symbol you want for that entity. <clears throat> but this is by an equation is equal to the mass flow rate of the gas times the enthalpy 5 minus enthalpy 1. Now I have a complete Q. I, I've tracked everything for the Q. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> well, here's a problem. And uh, if you followed what we just did on that other slide, then this is very straightforward. So I have a ga combined gas turbine vapor power cycle. State 1 is the beginning so state one, two, three, four, five, they're all air. And then six, seven, eight, nine, that's all steam. And you're given pressures and KPA. A lot of times with the air, we like to work in temperatures and K, but in steam, we like to work in temperatures and in degree C. So I have two temperature columns to keep them straight. And then the big one is I need all those enthalpies, true? Need those enthalpies for the air as well as for the steam at different locations. How do I calculate them? Looks like we're considering this PR column. That's that pressure for isentropic processes in the air table. So we're counting for variable specific heats for air. And oh, it looks like it goes from 1 to 2s and then 2 to 2 actual. So there's some isentropic efficiency of the compressor. But if you're just given the properties, somebody's done a lot of work already. Likewise, from 3 to 4S and then 3 to 4 actual, that's expansion through the turbine. Looks like there's some isentropic efficiency for that turbine, the gas turbine. And then from 7 to 8S, 7 to 8, that looks like expansion of the steam through the steam turbine. And then 9 to 6S or 9 to 6, that's the pump with some efficiency for the pump. So you can get a lot of states and a lot of calculations to get a table like this, but I need those enthalpies to answer a question like, what is the 
net power in megawatts developed by that power plant where they tell us not only the states but that the gas turbine produces 150 megawatts so they give us that W dot of the gas cycle is equal to 150 megawatts which is the difference between what the turbine produces and what the because it's all connected on the shaft the compressor part consumes and we worked out that equation which was the mass flow rate of the gas times enthalpy across the turbine 3 minus 4 minus the enthalpy across the compressor 2 minus 1 W dot gas so knowing W dot gas I know all those H's the only unknown is the mass flow rate that's going for the air true you can use that to then come in and get the mass flow rate of the steam from the energy balance around that heat exchanger the heat exchanger that linked the gas and the vapor power cycles together this was H7 minus H6 M dot gas H4 minus H5 and so now you can calculate the mass flow rate of the steam because you just calculated the mass flow rate of the gas once I know that then we calculate W dot vapor net is mass flow rate of the steam the work or the power out of the uh, steam turbine subtract off I didn't leave enough room there for the pump Does that all make sense? So now that I have the power out of the vapor power cycle, the net power developed by the entire plant is what comes out of the gas cycle, 150 megawatts, and what is produced by the vapor cycle. That's exactly right. So this uh, steam is in a two-phase region here and what comes out of the condenser at state 9 that goes into the pump is saturated liquid so this is saturated liquid zero right there and then compressed liquid at state 6 and then this is superheated vapor at state 7 and then two-phase the they're just a ranking you're combining the Brayton gas with the ranking vapor cycle. So that's how you answer for part A. And then the overall efficiency, you just have to calculate Q dot into the cycle. The only place it comes in is in the combustor where you burn the natural gas. What happened to the fuel? Because you said like you, uh, like you had a fuel source right. coming in with the gas. Right. And to account for the CO2 and the H2O, we do an air standard analysis which says it's just pure air. And so even though I showed the fuel there in the illustration, we, we, we don't have the tools at this point to do a good job of ana analyzing it. It can be more complex. And so uh, this was the mass flow rate of the gas times, what is it, enthalpy of 3 minus enthalpy 2. And then the thermal efficiencies the W dot plant over Q dot into the plant. 